Um, does anybody need an agenda that didn't get an agenda yet? Everybody got one? Arius? I have one. You got one? Yep. Okay. All right. Um, I am sorry. I thought I had the tent cards in the bag with all of the other stuff, and I didn't. So we'll have them back next time. Okay. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and kick off with introductions. And since Arius, you're in the hot seat, you want to start? Good evening, everybody. My name is Aria Tomster. I'm the program director for Gateway Housing Navigation. I almost forgot its name. It's been a long week. Uh, my name is Steve Sacco. I am a local business owner on Gibson Boulevard. I'm also a board member of the Elder Homestead Neighborhood Association. I'm Chuck Coleman, and I have a nonprofit called the Amy Cooper Plan to help any homelessness. And also, I have CWS Consulting, helping business, and the individual government revenue in 15 to 30 months. I'm sorry, sir, I couldn't hear you. Okay, my name is Chuck Coleman. Chuck, thank you. I'm Mike Krachowski, I'm the guy that's inflicting this test of the three. 60 degree uh, camera and omnidirectional microphone and trying to see how it works in this environment and uh, presuming that it actually works as I hope I will share the link so that you can look at it and see if you would want to have community conversations about various topics like this proposal um, and report them, put them onto YouTube. I've got lots of YouTube uh, storage. Uh, I've got stuff from back in 1991 on YouTube. <clears throat> so. Mr. Six. Very Congress, I'm a neighbor and a member of the Park Hills Neighborhood Association. John Comstock, I'm a Parkland Hills Neighborhood Association member, and also Parkland Village. And I'm, yeah, travel at politics. Same chair. Recent chair. Yeah, recent chair. Yeah, recent chair. Yeah, recent chair. Sandra Perea. Uh, Vice President of District 6 Neighborhood Coalition and President of Alder Homestead. Uh, Janet Simon, uh, President of Parkland Hills Neighborhood Association. My name is Carrie Crockrow, and I'm the Division Manager of the 311 Community Contact Center. My name is Wally Book. I'm a member of Parkland Hills. I'm Donna Strong, Parkland Hills. I'm um, Rachel Mendes, volunteer coordinator for your HHA. Sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> I couldn't hear your name. Rachel Hernandez yeah. with the city of Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. We have a Parkland Hills resident and vice president of the Parkland Hills Native Association. Yeah, Alex Kirk and also Parkland Hills. And I'm curious about more about, I haven't been in a while, so you can jump. I was curious about volunteer opportunities. I had two things. So, yeah. And I'm Nick Rankini, president of CSM Hills Neighborhood Association. Right. And in my same container that had all the time cards, I have our great sign in sheets. So these are today's sign in sheets. So you should go ahead. Give us your name, email, and phone number if this is one of your first time attending lately. If we already have it because you got this contact, you can just put your name. So we move. I'm Maria Wolf. I'm with the city of Albuquerque, and we are expecting a couple more people tonight from the city with Carrie Fair Wood 311. We're expecting Laura Keene from APD to talk to us also about some of the staff and members that we can use as baselines. And um, we are, I, I believe Doug Small is also attending tonight. He was with you guys at the District 6 meeting as well. So I thought he was gonna be here tonight too. So we'll see how that goes. So Mike, are we getting videotaped and audio taped or just audio taped? Uh, video and audio and I, I'm in the learning phase. <clears throat> You'll be able to, to look at it online and 
and give feedback and, and figure out if there's a better uh, configuration for the room. I know that there's background noise. I've got the audio supposedly adjusting for uh, you know, speech and background noises. Okay. We love so. modern technology. Um, so you'll send me the link. Oh, the absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, for the well, uh, okay. Totally. So just everybody knows you're getting recorded as usual. So, all right. So um, the uh, next thing we have on our agenda is we reviewed the meeting purpose as usual. And so this, you have a, a comment or question? Yeah, on, on this item because at last month's meeting, we were um, supposed to mm -hmm. um, review the operations plan and the neighbor agreement, right? So we never we never accomplished that because of how the meeting was folded unfolded. Okay, so that's I'm not suggesting we do that tonight, but um, we that is something that we I think asked for back in November. Yes. So you still yes. want to spend it absolutely because uh, also at last night last month's meeting we had talked about having people submit some comments so that we had some stuff ahead of time mm -hmm. and i didn't get any but we can definitely plan to spend next month's meeting doing it in person if you'd rather do that than submitting stuff yeah that I'm, I'm yeah okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's the plan then and it's good that it's next month because in that same packet where the time cards are are the extra copies of the neighbor agreement and the office plan so it's all there together so i will bring all of that next month so okay all right so um is everybody good to go with the agenda as it is now sure oh. okay okay all right, but um, actually, well, we, I thought also at the last meeting that we had decided that we wouldn't meet every single month. Did we not just, was that not decided? No, oh, okay. no, you actually set all of the meeting dates for every month at the last meeting. Yep. Correct. And so we are meeting all the months. But I need to tell you guys, I'm not going to be here in June. So you will have somebody else facilitating you in June. So just so you know. I'll go on through take over for you. You're, you're going to be off proper that night, yeah. taking the notes, bringing the treats. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, we'll, so just so you know, that that is done. But um, we did talk about that the Good Neighbor Agreement allows for monthly meetings or quarterly. Mm -hmm. But anybody want to tell me you want quarterly instead? Because it was not my understanding we were moving part of it. No. I think that's correct. It was every month. Because mm -hmm. you literally went through the calendar and said month right. by month of dates, including not meeting on Thanksgiving, <laughs> which was very wise. <laughs> hey, Laura, welcome. Okay. Um, any other changes or comments for the agenda? Okay. Then. Um, as usual, our goal for tonight's meeting is to create a platform for community action. Um, the meeting purpose is laid out here, and I'm not going to take your time to read it out loud to you, because I know we all read really, really well. Um, our goal is to find a balance between moving our conversations forward and identifying greater solutions and intentions while still addressing concerns in real time. Um, Tonight's intended results are to discuss options for baseline metrics and to determine metrics to be reported monthly and quarterly or annually. That, that's what we're talking about tonight. Um, then uh, our meeting principles, as usual, are that we're going to be hard on the issues but easy on the people because we're all here spending our time in the evening because we care about our community. We listen to learn and seek to understand. So instead of parsing grammar or whether the person used the right word, we just try to understand what they're trying to say. We respect the speaker, but we also respect the listener. So that's also described as step up and step back. If you've had the opportunity to make a number of comments or questions, allow somebody else to have a chance and then come back to you. 
We ask you to stay on topic, respect the agenda and the time constraints, because we have an hour and a half together. We try to, we have a lot we get through. And sometimes we don't get through because like last meeting, we didn't finish the ops plan and we didn't finish uh, reviewing the, the neighbor agreement. Um, we add, we try to set dates for follow-up, so we will come back to it. And um, we want to be kind to each other and try to have fun and laugh if we can. And on that, just help yourself to snacks. If you get hungry, there's lemonade and orange cake, snacks. There's instant coffee, which I've never bought before, so you have to let me know if it's worth having for you and things like that. Um, any meeting principles that you like to have in a meeting that are not reflected in our standard community guidelines? Okay, we're good to go. Um, next, we are going to have our Gateway Navigation Center update. And that's for Arias to give us. Uh, she gave, she asked last month for insights on what kind of information you guys want. So we'll see how we do this time and see if you have additional questions or things you'd like her to include. So I didn't make a printout for everybody. If you want it for now, let me know. I'll make a copy. But uh, just to report on some numbers that you guys, you all were interested in last meeting. Um, we served a total of 82 people at the Gateway Housing Navigation for the month of February, and we served 59 people in the emergency winter shelter. Um, let's see, exit destinations, um, six people from the Housing Navigation Center in February went into permanent housing. Um, Three went to an institutional setting, which is like um, a hospital or maybe a correctional facility. I'm sorry, how many was that? Three. Three. Mm -hmm. What was the number before that? Oh. Six. Six. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. And then um, six of them went to a temporary setting, so usually staying with a friend or family member for mm -hmm. a short amount of time. Um, and then 18 of them went to a different shelter. For the emergency winter shelter, we um, housed three of them in permanent housing. Um, two of them went to temporary setting and 21 of them left to another shelter. Or they will again on, yeah, on Sunday. The winter shelter closes at the end of March. And then for the age ranges served, 18 through 24 at the Gateway Housing Navigation, there were eight people in the month of February in that age range. Um, there were nine people for the age range 25 through 34. There were 18 um, for the age range 35 through 44. And then 45 through 54, there were 21 people. And then 54 through 64, there were 19 people, and 65 plus, mm -hmm. there were seven. Seven? Seven. 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 Question. Mm -hmm. uh, you um, sorry, this is the previous subject where it's mm -hmm. The numbers you gave add up to 33. What happened to the other 49? Are they still here? Um, yes. Yeah, that's how many people exited. So not everybody exited in February that we brought in in February. How many can you know if you want? 50. Mm -hmm. Is it men and women? Or? Um, just women here at the Gateway Center, yes. Our winter shelter um, is primarily men, but we do reserve a few beds for um, Albuquerque Community Safety and they can bring in women. And is that the process that people have to come in through? Is the uh, community safety department or the other police or how um, So we have five beds reserved specifically for ACS. Mm -hmm. And then the rest are referrals from service providers. And then so if, uh, if I find a homeless person who's pretty needs help, 
How is the best way to get them through the system? Uh, there has to be an online referral from a service provider. Um, we can get you the the website for the online referral. I'm just wondering, the 18 people that were moved to another shelter, why were they moved? Um, they may not have wanted to stay at the Gateway Shelter. We do, um, we, their expectation is that they engage while they are at the Gateway. Um, and some people are not ready for that type of engagement. Okay. And so they might want to just go back to the West Side Shelter, or maybe they had kids and didn't realize coming here, they couldn't bring their children. And so maybe they had to come here for a while, get a little situation until they're able to get into a family shelter. Okay. So those reasons just vary. Okay. Thank you. I just had a question, and you probably have answered this in the past, but when you were talking about uh, people being released, released to another shelter, mm -hmm. is that one shelter, is that, a, is that a shelter that we know about? Is that multiple shelters? What, what is that? Yeah, so like, again, it could be dependent on the person's situation. They might have come here as a single female, but they do have children and the people taking care of the children might not be able to take care of them any longer. So they might be, want to be referred to a family shelter. So they might go to a family shelter. Or um, again, like I mentioned, um, it looks like someone's trying to get in. Um, they might not be ready to engage in case management services, and that is an expectation while they're at gateway mm -hmm. is to be in services. So they might want to go to a different shelter that doesn't require that. Um, so are there are, multiple sh shelters in town then? There are multiple shelters throughout our we, we have, do, are those names published anywhere? What those shelters no, are? They're on the um, cbq.gov slash health, housing, and homelessness website okay. under shelters. And so, um, you know, the, the largest is the West Side Shelter. Um, you have the Barrett House for Women's Shelter. You have um, Albuquerque Valley Community Center Men's Shelter. You have Grove City Shepherd Men's Shelter. You have Steel Bridge. You have Joy Junction. Um, I'm sure there's a couple others that aren't coming to my head right now, but those those are some of them. They're all private there. shelters, right? Private uh, or privately run. Many of them are. Um, the uh, the West Side Shelter is obviously a city shelter. It's, it's in our former jail on the West Side. Um, oh, Family Housing Navigation Center is also a city shelter for our families. Um, so that those two are not privately run, not 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 run. Yeah, so, well, please So the question I had, I was under the impression that Gateway was a triage center, and people weren't supposed to stay here. They're supposed to come here and figure out what they need, and then send them off that way. So is that incorrect? That's incorrect. I'm sorry. I swear I heard that here. So we, Did I not? <laughs> we, so let me clarify, Wally, if I can. Yeah. Is that okay? Um, so Gateway has multiple components coming online, right? So the first is the Housing Navigation Center that right now has 50 women staying at it. They can stay. The idea is that they stay 90 days. And it's with intensive work with case management and the goal is to navigate them into housing. So they're stable and they're housed. And so when she talks about that maybe somebody wasn't ready to really work on it, and so they went back to a shelter, that means that they weren't ready to spend the time to do a casework, to figure out finances, to figure out all of the different parts that go into determining if you're going to be able to get housed either with a voucher or through work or through other ways to get people stabilized into housing. So we work with them for 90 days, more or less. Sometimes it's 110, sometimes it's 30, sometimes it's 20, depending on what the person's needs are. So that's the housing navigation set. Then what's getting ready to come on board, it's great that Terry's here, <laughs> Uh, is the triage, it, it's like a triage center, we're calling it the receiving area, and it's a first responder drop-off space, 
It's the space that we call the sorting hub where people can come when they're in crisis, work with people to figure out what's the next best step for this individual. So it could be that they need to um, go into treatment. It could be that they need to, well, Terry, do you want to, Terry, do you want me to work with uh, I'm fine. Okay. Yeah. So Terry, um, we're, we're working with Terry from UNM on, um, you know, getting the contract finalized for this. So it's highly likely that we will be working with Terry, who is here, for providing a lot of the services in that receiving area. And so that is probably where you got the word triage in your head is because that's basically what they're going to be doing. It's a short-term stay to determine next best steps. So do you want to add anything here? Uh, just that um, we hope to be able to be first. We're this close to getting the contract finalized. Um, like Maria said, we'll only receive folks from first responders and we expect our primary uh, contact Drop off folks will be Albuquerque uh, Community Safety or DCS. You see them driving around. Um, we will have only 24 hours to serve folks. Uh, and during that time, we're going to provide them a safe space that's trauma informed, operating by harm reduction principles and health promotion principles. So we're going to meet people where they are and uh, treat them like humans and be as welcoming as we can. Um, and try very quickly to surround them with navigation services uh, so that they can access the next step in whatever they need, be it housing, uh, medical home, dental home, behavioral health home, food security. A back of the triage system. So, right. Those are our limitations. A 24 hour return on to be able to help folks is, is not ideal. Um, but they, we have a bunch of community health worker agencies in town uh, that we're going to be partnering with, uh, as well as bringing all of the resources of the UN Health Sciences. So, Terry, what, what happened after 24 hours? You triage them in 24 hours, they should determine what their needs are, and then you put them out to other. We are uh, ideally going to be able to transport people to where they need to get. Uh, you say you will or we're not? We will. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're supposed to be getting a city van, so it's predicated on that. Um, but that's uh, that's part of the what we're working on with the contract. So we will hopefully um, have that van when we're ready to open. And when we have that van, we will transport folks to wherever they need to go in the city. So who's holding this up? Uh, nobody's holding it up. I, I, I tell you, remind you all that the ramp up time for this has been unbelievable um, in public health and community health and social services. To plan a program like this usually takes two years. We all have lifted this off in five months, and I have been working around the clock, literally. Uh, I, yeah. That wasn't that wasn't directed at you, no. but you said you were hopeful the city would provide a van. What? Oh no, we have a van. Oh no, the yeah, but they the just city like, will. Yeah, we, we already have a will. sun van. Oh, uh, absolutely right. Oh. I, I have to speak in vagaries because our contract oh. is this close oh. yeah. to being executed. So I my know. apologies. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're both being a little vague because right. nobody has signed on the dotted line right. because we have to wait for UNM's purchasing, right. city purchasing, right. and then it'll finally come together. Yeah, so. it's happening fast, and I'm sorry for the. I'm I'm sorry. Right. I just want to be clear. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Arius, I would I would like a copy of that report. I just wasn't able to, okay. to write fast enough. Yeah, yeah. I can send this. I have one extra copy. I can send this around. People can take a look at it, but I can make extras too. Yeah. So we can add it in. Yeah, I don't want to get off track too much, but I'm a little confused about something because I thought people were coming in here to get treatment, and that was the whole idea is that it was, you know, different kinds of treatment at one place. So when you say you're transferring people to other places where they can get the specific help they need, what are we talking about? I, you know, and I also am curious if people can stay here and not get treatment for drug addiction if that's their issue. 
Do you mean the people who were moved to an institutional setting or something like that? Well, it was just said that, you know, through this um, sorting hat process that the triage would send them to the desired or needed places that they needed to go. I'm just a little confused about what we're doing here. Yeah. So, and you can pitch in to Terry. Um, so right now we have 50 housing navigation center beds and they're full. So to what Terry is going to be doing is having an intake for people who primarily are in a crisis point and they're brought here by the Albuquerque Community Safety because they need to get them. Okay, stables. they're not going through a provider. They're just coming directly yeah. off the street and being okay. And they're and they're working with Terry's okay. team and then they're figuring out like what is our next step? Because it could be that it's the psych emergency. It could be sure okay it's a physical emergency. It could be that no, wow, we just need to get them into a, a shelter space. They need a bed for the night. Okay. You know, it, it, or it could be that they're eligible for the CARES campus for a sobering center. So so it's getting them to the right space. Okay, thank you for that. So the, the other people, the other group of people that are coming in now are going through a provider. They have to be referred to here by a to provider. The bed unit. Yeah. Right. And so those people are here getting treatment, are they not? So drug addicts or alcoholics, somebody like that is just allowed to come and stay and sleep and never get treatment, even though we have that available to them here, do we not? We I mean there is uh treatment programs here. Right. Um, but we are we can't mandate them to get treatment. So if they do not want to see treatment or they don't want to go to a rehabilitation center, we can't do that. What the case managers do is work on the barriers because there's other barriers to housing. It's not just getting treatment for them in that in that moment. Sometimes they don't have identification documents, so they're working on obtaining those. Um, maybe they need access to primary, they need to establish primary care. And so it's helping them do that as well. And in, in, while they're doing that, they're talking to them about, you know, what it might be to obtain sobriety as well. And so it's, yeah, this is, it's not a treatment. Okay, but she did say that his, the interaction was demanded here. If someone was going to stay. Right. So to to in services. And by services, I mean case management services. What right. percentage of your um, residents here, or your temporary residents, uh, are active drug users who have those keep your drugs in a box that no one looks at, check them out and go out into our neighborhood to use them and then come back? Well, that wasn't part of the data that was requested, so I couldn't tell you that tonight. But if that is something that you are requesting, we can look at that data and compile it for the next week. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. um, can you ballpark it tonight? I mean, a small percentage, most of them? I can. Okay. Yeah. And recognize also that um, when people do their housing, um, and take for our um, homeless management information system. That is a question that is asked, but it's a person self-reporting. So there's a lot of stigma around self-reporting that you are addicted or an alcoholic or anything like that. Sure. So whether they choose to report it or not is on them. We don't do drug testing and things like that here. Uh, just to try and keep on the agenda, are there other metrics that anyone here would like to see? That's a good question. Are there other metrics that you would want to see track? From, from areas specifically at this point? Yes. Yeah. So could we talked about a lot last time. So are there other questions people have from areas for the future needs? So I have Chuck and then I have Wallace. You got a brochure or a handout or something that tells what you're uh, all about, what's the first step, second step, how to refer people, what you're doing. I mean, to answer one of these questions. We I mean, just try to write Do you have anything, Anthony? Um, I don't have anything with me tonight, but I can get you guys that information. That would be nice. That would be yeah, it's all on the website. 
It's on the website? Oh, yeah, it is. Most all, I'm pretty sure all of this is on our website. Okay. Yeah. Okay, hold on, hold on. It was Wally, okay. and then... Yeah. How many services are available here? How many reasons to stay in this location? For the 50 people who are staying here right now? I'm... Yeah. ACS brings somebody to the door and they're being, I'm assuming they take them to the receiving room. They will be. It's not open. You're talking about for the triage or for the original? Well, when we started asking about numbers, all of a sudden there are this many that are being processed and there are this many that are going to the housing navigation center and there are this many that are going here and there. So I'm totally confused about what the gateway can actually deal with in a day's time or what the prospect is or what the hope is. Okay, so right now, today, we have 50 beds for women with a navigation center. And so- And they're, so presumably they're looking for housing. And they're working on housing, they're working on job training, they're working on a variety of things to get themselves stabilized in the time that they have here. So they're working with the case manager. So um, that that's right now. Then the triage receiving area sorting hat place that we were talking about is coming online. And that will be, I, I don't know, how, maybe it's a distribution space. It's, it's a hub that then goes to distribute the folks who have been in crisis to hopefully the next best steps for them. Okay, so that is what is coming on next. After that, in the next year, we will have the um, medical respite, the 50 beds for medical respite. Additional 50. An additional 50 beds for people who are being released from hospital who cannot take care of themselves and need assistance from a medical provider to recover more and who has no home to go to. So it's it's a person who's homeless and needs medical respite. Okay, right now there's nowhere for them to go. It's a gap in the system. Then there will be 50 medical sobering beds. So that is where people are not eligible to go to the CARES campus because they are not, uh, they're not mobile, they can't stand up and walk in and sign their name. The, the Bernalillo County CARES campus does have a sobering center, but if you're not ambulatory and aware enough to sign yourself into the sobering center, you cannot go there. Right now, people have to go to the emergency room for that. So then there are going to be additional housing navigation beds for men added in as well. So, so that's what's coming on board with the navigation services, connecting people to services, but it's not here now. Right now, we have 50 beds. Next is the, the triage, the sorting hat, and then these other things are coming on board and, in about a year. I thought I understood that there were 50 beds for women and then another 39 beds or something for men. Ah, uh, I understand where you're coming from now. This is part, of, I, I can understand this. Let me clarify that. Sorry, I left that out of the of the detail. <laughs> there is a lot of moving parts. Details, details. I know, it's all the details. <laughs> so from October through March, we had a winter shelter here, and it was for 35 people. And it's mm -hmm. only in October through March during the cold winter months where people die from being on the streets. So that was set up here for that. It mm -hmm. ends this weekend. And so that is the 18 people. Is that right? Is that the right number? I don't know. There that no 21 to other shelters out of that group. And so some of them have gone into housing, some of them have gone to a temporary setting with family or yeah, oh, that's what she said. 
and then the rest are going to other shelters because that shelter closes down. So they're getting to the Albuquerque Opportunity Center or the West Side Shelter. It's primarily men. And so my guess would be those two locations, perhaps Brothers of the Good Shepherd. Okay. This is just a community guidelines request. One of them is respect the listener. And so people in the audience are asking questions and your heads are away from people from other people here, please remember to speak up loudly enough so we can hear your question. All right. Do you guys want me to add that to this? Speak it's up? already up there. It says respect the listener. Okay. Do I need to say speak up? That's implied. Okay. All right. Very good. Somebody else, uh, Pete? Well, I think or, Leslie had a question. Leslie? First. Actually, okay. you kind of actually covered it, but because I did want to clarify that there were these additional medical respite and then the what is it? They're not sobering center, but I mean, medical oh, sobering, medical sobering, and medical respite. It's, yes, medical so so that was medical respite. Um, your confusion. Wallet. Um, um, well, well, I think that was maybe related to your confusion about why there were all these additional if people were expected to or get services because that that will happen with the medical respite and the additional sobering. There was additional. There's like different now sources of money for all of these different functions that gateway is supposed to serve right i mean i'm looking at the yeah part right now yeah i mean that's part of trying so so of all of these specific pieces that are being built in are based on that gap analysis of where do we not have the services being met and so we know that medical respite is a huge weakness you know how we know because right now the hospitals send folks to the West Side Shelter. And the West Side Shelter has to call the hospital and say, we're sending them right back to you because this is not the place for a person who cannot change their bandages or who cannot get up out of bed and go to the bathroom. Or who, like, really, we need a place for these folks. And so that's what that's for. And then CARES Campus right now, if you come and you're not ambulatory and you arrive in their parking lot, so your, your auntie drops you off because you're, pa you're passing out or passed out, you know what they do right now? They call emergency and an ambulance takes them to an emergency room. So this will create a space where you have the doctors who know how to deal with that higher risk person than they can at the CARES campus right now. So I think I think this is why it's kind of important for the folks who come to these meetings to understand this is that the, this is a huge facility. What does the city intend? I mean, how much more is expected to be added to what is going to be happening here? Because all of this incrementally has the potential to you know, affect the surrounding neighborhoods. So uh -huh. that that's why one is it's good to get a to pin down exactly what's happening right now, but what's going to happen in the future do we know mr mayor has said thousands i know he's, that's why he's been a moving target five, five so. yeah. i also want to clarify that that I, I think i said it in the last meeting so i want to make it super clear again the sobering center and the triage receiving area those are both like 24 hour stays for that person to get transferred to the next step so medical sobering is something that's usually like a 24 hour, maybe 48 hour, but it's not mm -hmm. a month long treatment. And so we have the potential of you have 50 beds, you have 365 days a year, multiply 50 times, you know, make it, you know, 200. And that's how many people for that one facility in a year. And so you get up to your thousands pretty quickly, even though you only have 50 beds. And they're not staying here. They're here, and then they're going to CARES. They're going to Turquoise Lodge. They're going to other facilities to get that treatment. What is the relationship between the Turquoise Lodge and Gateway? Turquoise Lodge is its own organization. They rent from the Gateway Center. They're one of the renting Agency. So we have Turquoise Lodge, we have um, AMG, is that it's AMG, right? Um, AMG is a hospital recovery hospital. These are the accredited places, and we have Haven Behavior Health. 
And they're major tenants. They have big chunks of this space. This gateway sends people to them or not? When it's appropriate, yes. I mean, not this part of gateway, but it can be a connector for the triage elements that are coming on board, for the medical respite that's coming on board, and for the um, medical sobering that's coming on board. Yes, that, that is a future thing. Okay, Paul, you guys can't see, but in the back, yeah, thank you. Terry, right. um, what's the expected capacity for the triage services? Uh, uh, on like a daily basis. Yeah, up to 20. Okay. Okay. So up to 20 per day. Up to 20 per day. Up to, yes. Yeah, so so I, think, I think that some of the recent numbers that we've seen with ACS have been like six or seven that, that they're doing nighttime transports. That's a number I hear from them. Um, you know, that could change. But, mm -hmm. And I don't know how many of, of the additional people are like going to a hospital now and they'll be able to go to the two years from then. So, yeah. Okay, Tom. And you, you mentioned the respite for the people coming out of the hospital. They have to send them to West Side now where they need more care. Who is in charge of that? I know a lady that has two houses in a condo that takes people from UNM Mental Health to her place. They're schizophrenic, they're bipolar, they're their strokes and everything, they can't really take care of themselves. So who do I talk to about helping them and intersecting with them? So the services are available today and they can be expanded quite easily because they're a private company. Uh, well, you should definitely connect me with that person. I can connect them with some of the outreach providers, ACS people who are specializing in working with those more acute people with serious mental illness and stuff like that. So we can try to connect that person. Um, and then- So it's something coming online in six months or a year. So, oh, and you were asking who sends the people? So the hospitalist? The, or the charge nurse, or uh, what do you call the nurse person at the hospital? The, the nurse person. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. discharge process. Discharge, yeah, yeah. discharge <laughs> nurse. That was the word I was looking for. So they they are the ones making uh, a lot of these determinations. Sometimes the hospitals effectively use their caseworkers wow. to find a better placement. Sometimes they don't when they don't. Um, you know, we 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 have recently had to write up a very clear criteria for the West Side Shelter and say, like, if you're discharging somebody to us who meets these this criteria, we will be sending them right back to you because it's not the right thing to do to this poor person. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Uh, I I like that. <laughs> My turn. Your are you sure that the programs that are coming online will in fact come online? This has been told to the community over and over and over. People ask me, do they mean it? I really can't answer that question. I'm going to say that there's every intention that they're going to come online, but you know what challenge will pop up to delay these programs. You know, I was talking to the president of Trouble Village. Two of her clients died on the street for lack of medical care. You know, I mean, it's just a fact, they died. And, and she was in tears uh, and, and, you know, she knew them. So uh, it, it, it's, it's becoming harder and harder to believe city administration. You know, I'm really trying you know, if I could find one glimmer of hope, then I grab onto it. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, this is not your decision or anybody else's, but it's somebody's decision. And I think I did please pass that on. We'd really like to see it. And numbers like 20, 10, 7, don't begin to address the problem. And then another problem is 60% of all services are found here in District 6. Well, some up in, up in District 9. And folks are asking me, how come? And I, I don't, well, you know, well, because the homeless are here. Well, really? Uh, I've driven the city. I mean, I'm really looking. And I see them everywhere. 
Now, I mean, I'm talking the heights, uh, certainly the South East Heights, uh, around Parkland Hills, uh, you know, and there, you know, it's a growing number. It's not a decrease, uh, decline number. So, you know, if you could, if we could have some assurances, uh, and, and the other, other thing, just a, just a procedural thing, the handout is really important. Could you just have 25 of everything you're talking about made? So oh, okay, can we get a handout? Yeah. I, I mean, it's really important. Yeah, we can look it up and uh, but some do look it up, some can't look it up, so some don't want to look it up. But if they have this, they have something right for them, just as a favor. So I don't have we everybody has this. No, I'm talking about her report. Her handout. Okay. Well, just, yes. if we have an earlier today, I can make a Okay, thank you. And I, I just had a question for some more information about the medical sobering. How long, and maybe I should be directing it to you, I don't know, but whoever knows if they could answer. Uh, Not a doctor. How, how long does that, do you anticipate people being there and how many people are you at setting it up to um, accommodate at a time? So, um, I think my understanding, so not a doctor, you can just be super clear on that. Um, my understanding is that medical sobering is a time period where a person is um, either so intoxicated that their respiratory rate can be impacted, and that is the place where they cannot be at the CARES campus. And so you're trying to get them through that 24 hour period, primarily. It's, it, I think it's usually 24 hours to get them stabilized enough for the next steps. So if it's alcohol, um, it's, you know, they've had enough that they are at risk. I actually, you know, know a person who a family member was trying to take them to CARES campus person did not want to um, go through detox and so drink like I don't know how much and actually uh, got to CARES campus, could not get out of the car. Um, they called an ambulance. Thank goodness they did because he stopped breathing in the ambulance and was on a respirator for three days until he got stable. So this is what we're talking about is that kind of situation for, for alcohol. For fentanyl, you can re you can reverse it with opioids. With the zines, you can't. So you are looking at something more like a respirator need in those cases. Um, if they're on methamphetamines, they're bouncing off the walls, and so it's going to include some private rooms that the person can be in if they're more disruptive, right? And so it just depends on what they're using, but the general, usually uh, methamphetamines, it's what, eight to 16 hours, something like that. I'm not sure. I'm I, not a doctor. That's what I've heard. <laughs> not a doctor either. I keep looking at it because I'm like, we're going to figure this out, right? But um, but it's it's usually eight to 16 hours to for the methamphetamine to go off and the person to be at a more stable level, if that's what it is, because you can't tell if it's an absolute psychotic break, schizophrenia, or if it's methamphetamine until enough time has passed. So, so that's what we're working on, is trying to get through that crisis time period to get them into CARES campus for the next level of detox or turquoise lodge or other treatment facilities. As opposed to completing a withdrawal process. No, this is yeah. That not not okay. supposed to, but to go next no. steps of uh, withdrawal. Would it? I understand that there's a real critical period right at the start that is consistent with that. But you're not saying that the sobering is to complete the withdrawal no. process, which would take a week or days two. and weeks. Yeah. No, this is to get them through okay. the part that's medically. There, there's a gap right okay. now. So they're in your emergency rooms right now at that time period. Okay. And so we're trying to make another space for them. So they're not in your emergency room waiting room. And how big a operation is this going to be? That was the other part. 50 beds. 50 beds for medical sobering? Yes. Okay. And it's, and it's uh, like, I want to say 30, 
30, has 30 something beds and and then um, like five, seven rooms. I can't remember. I don't think I'm, I, I only saw it before walls are in there, so I can't pick through the rooms. But so it's like a, a big round room with beds and like reclining chairs so that people are sitting up so they don't aspirate. And then some rooms for people who are more disruptive. Hey guys. Mm -hmm. And that's supposed to be here in you know, how many months? Um, next winter. Yes. I don't think the contractor has been willing to say how many months, but it's next winter. And he, the intent is that it happens. So, I mean, I mean <laughs> it's me. I, I believe that. It I, I believe the intent. Yeah. Yes. But I'm pragmatic here. You know, the promise was made, the timeline was increased. Uh, the promise was made, the timeline was increased again. And uh, folks are frustrated. Just have, yeah. And they're having a hard, hard time uh, believing what the administration is saying. <laughs> and and uh, I'm at a point where uh, I don't have any reasonable uh, way to 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 give hope, other than we're watching with both eyes and, and we're trying to do what we can do. Uh, but uh, you know this this is a huge investment, and and uh, you know the, the the need is so. Great uh, across our city, and, and we the other thing we really want to see a commitment from the other eight council districts in terms of programs there, not bringing everybody here. And it's you know a lot of people believe that to be true. If I could wave a magic I wand, we'd have a shelter in every district. I don't. I don't. I told I'm you like, that. I'll say it again. I'm, <laughs> I'm you know, I'll just, I, I'll say it over and over. So, right there with me. It's the only way that we all become part of the solution is if, if we're really working on it. And other communities are working on it where you are. So, all right, guys. That was. A long one. That was a little bit of <laughs> Gateway Housing Navigation Center update and a little bit of uh, current questions. community concerns. <laughs> so are we done with community questions and concerns or does somebody else have another one? Uh, I do. Okay. Um, I found out that the West Side Center Management and Operation Program is being bid out. Yes. And I think it's a good thing, personally. Um, I would hope that public health services are added to that program because I think they're needed. But what's alarming is the present budget is 5.6 million. It's now being advertised at 4.1 million. And I'm thinking, huh? Do you want me to explain that? I do. Okay. So um, the the budget that was Westside Shelter RFP was released March 15th, I think, 13th, 15th, right around there. Um, it is open for one month. It is for a new provider for the shelter. And it has two options within the RFP. The first option is a provider for the entire facility for the health, safety, cleanliness of the facility. So janitorial, door monitors, checking people in, doing HMIs and take, um, and uh, uh, security guards. So all of that is part of that proposal that providers will have to submit if they want to manage the entire facility. Um, 11 dorms, 60 people per dorm. So pretty big facility. Former jail. So we've talked about how it's less than ideal in so many ways, but it is what we have available for the people. We're averaging more than 550 people a night. Sure. So um, new to the RFP this year is 
uh, the possibility for people to submit a proposal for one dorm. So taking on that whole facility, that's a big bite for a lot of our small nonprofits and service providers. But a new option is to submit a proposal for one dorm for a specific group who needs help. This is based on a number of large shelters and other communities that have figured out that if you take that big shelter and break it up into smaller pieces that are intensively serving specific groups, you can really make a much better difference than we are right now at our West Side Shelter. So um, in specifically in Los Angeles, downtown LA, Skid Row, there's a nine story hotel that is now a shelter run by Weingarten, if anybody wants to look it up. Each floor is a different group. So they have prison reentry, they have um, workforce development, they have medical respite, you know, each floor is a different group. So um, that's what we're trying to get started at the West Side Shelter, is, is having that possibility of um, having people with similar issues or interests in an area with people who specialize in that. So I'm crossing my fingers. I've sent it out to every single provider I can think of. And if any of you think of any you want me to send it to, you let me know and I'm happy to forward it on. The reason I was so close to being late tonight is because I was coming from doing a walkthrough with people who are interested in the proposal that was scheduled for today. So it's 4.1 million. So, in, oh yeah, that's what I was gonna tell you. 4.1 yeah. million is for the managing the entire facility, right. health, safety, security. So that's paying for the two dorm monitors per dorm 24 seven. Uh, at least two security guards 24-7, HMIS intake 24-7, um, uh, and janitorial, and your management structure and that part. So that's the 4.1 million is for the general management of the facility. The additional funding that you saw there is, you know, trying to figure out how many people are going to submit for a dorm, because we're, we're guessing what's going to happen, but also recognize that the city budget as a whole includes transportation to and from three meals a day and um, oh medical. It does not include the medical providers. We have EMTs from six in the morning to nine at night, two EMTs and a doc to run the EMTs who works 10 hours a week. So 10 hours a week. A week. So, because she's monitoring and, and she's managing our EMT team. We have clinicals provided by um, Healthcare for the Homeless and First Nations two days a week. Um, we have foot clinics and various other providers who come in and do services. So, health services will be provided seven days a week, but by different subcontractors. Not necessarily. Um, we have the EMT seven days a week as part of the city contract. So that is that's providing, you know, kind of a triage of can can this person recover in their bed here, or do they need to go into town to a doc, or do they need need emergency? So the secondary care? budget is how much, four point one for operational, and how much is. Uh, what the full amount for, for everything is um I I actually would have to look at it because I haven't looked at it lately, but it was it's more like six million. Yeah. See, that makes sense. Yeah. It's more like six million. It might and it might be more than that. Don't hold me on that as I I'm not I'm not looking it up and giving you the number. So but the budget is available. Um anybody can look at it. So thank you. Okay. I'm gonna have to get some water if you guys want me to talk anymore. It's probably time for me to listen to you more. Uh, so um, one of the things that we were trying to get done tonight is to talk to you guys about what um, things you want, uh, what kinds of metrics you want to report on, not just from um, the Housing Navigation Center and when it comes up the receiving area and other parts, 
but what um, you want to look at for the area around us, for that half mile radius that's part of your good neighbor agreement, for um, the, uh, you know, what, what are the other calls? And so we have with us today, and I want to thank you both for coming, Curry Cockerell, who is with, did I say it right here? You sure did. Um, Carrie Cockrow is the director for our 311 system. And she uh, was really kind enough to look at some ways of searching in 311 reports and calls for keywords and things like that. And that can be brought up in certain time periods. And then we could set some, I call them hanging reports, but they're, there are reports that we could then have numbers where we're setting a baseline, and then we can start looking at it month to month, year to year, and compare apples to apples, hopefully, as opposed to apples to oranges. And then we also have with us tonight Laura King with APB, and she is, uh, have you, you guys got to know Laura after all? Oh, the <laughs> Southeast, <laughs> right? What's it? What's it? She's one of the gang, but she um, she has some ideas for you on the APD numbers as well, and um, and then she couldn't come tonight, but Lieutenant Stevenson, Stevenson. Oh, I was going to say Simon, Lieutenant Stevenson is going to come next month. She wanted to come tonight, but she had a training she was doing tonight. So because she's been looking at some of the metrics and numbers that she's really interested in looking at for the southeast area, so. Without further ado, how about if we start with Carrie and see what ideas you have and just to, to tell them what you think we might be able to do or to start off with, and then we can delve into what keywords and things you think would be more important. Does that sound okay? That sounds fun. So I'm honored to be here tonight. Thank you. Um, I grew up in the Elder Homestead neighborhood. My mother still lives there. So it, uh, everything that's happening and the things that I think concern you concern me. So um, I'm happy to provide you with what information that you need. I can tell you some things 311 can do for you all. And then we have some limitations. So there we can search anything um, that gets reported. I can't search on something that isn't reported into 311. So it would have to be that I can give you the total number of calls or incidences that are reported regarding a particular location. I can't do a radius search. That gets really hard. So I, what I did, and I'll, I'll show this to you so you can kind of take a look at it, um, is I pulled some information for the 87108 zip code, mm -hmm. um, and I used some keywords. So some of the keywords that I searched were needles, uh, I searched things like reports that have contained the word homeless in it. Um, I also pulled information about alleys because y'all have alleys and not every neighborhood has an alley. Uh, and that can sometimes draw some issue. So you'll see the keywords there that I pulled. And this is going back for two years. Um, I can also do things like heat maps for you. There's an example there on that one side. Of, of what gets reported into 311. Um, what you're looking at, and if you want me to walk you through that, mm -hmm. the glasses on here. Mm -hmm. I, we're getting more copies made for people who can read it. Yeah, I, I, I made 20. I wasn't quite sure how many of y'all were going to be here. Um, we have more to move than usual. Thanks, agree. That's great. So what you're looking at are the numbers of reports up on the, I'll start on the top left, the number of reports for those keywords that have come in. Um, the bottom right below that is the issue by type. So you can see of all of the homeless calls that came in, how many were done for each year, right? So 40.5% for 2022, there were 51.9% for 2023. And then of course, 2024, we only have a little bit of data. Uh, that pie chart up there at the top is out of the last, since 2022, there were 22,810 reports into 
our system that are these key words, okay? This isn't the whole entirety of what gets reported to 311, but these are just these key words. And then below that, there's just a quick recap of bullet points of the content that is right next to it on the left. And then you can see the heat maps, what it looks like. 2022's heat map looks darn near similar to 2023, so I didn't include it, but I can pull that sort of data for you if you would like to see that. So this is just an example of some of the things that I can provide. Um, why I say a radius, my system does not let me do a radius, but if you need to absolutely know what, what, what's happening in between Louisiana and San Pedro, between Gibson and Catherine, let's say, we can try to narrow that down. That's a little complex because then I'm pulling every address within that box. Um, but keyword searching is probably the best bet and zip code I can do by zip code. Uh, we can search by police feed. I can't search things like Siesta Hills because you'll get a really, you won't get that search. I'm, I can't search Elder Homestead because that's not a searchable feature. And if I put in the world Elder, you're going to get everything that's Elder that is <laughs> yeah, not so. anything. So those are some of the, of the content that we can provide to you. It's fairly quick for us to do it. I just need to know in advance. This was sort of put together for you because we had talked about, well, what do they want? I, when I'm asking Maria, what, what do they need? I can get them things that they need, but what do they want to see? So I just need to know from y'all what you want to see. And the other thing I had to ask is maybe we can identify the zip plus fours. I can't do plus four. Oh, you can't do plus no, four. I can't do plus four. I was thinking that we would be able to get our nuggets in the right way. We can help you drill down. It, it, it's, it's, um, Painting in broad strokes is difficult, but painting in specific strokes is, is easier for the system to pull out. Yeah. And always we need a time frame. So that's helpful. I have content that goes back in this current system to 2016. So um, if you need it further back than that, I can get it for you, but it just it won't appear nicely. <laughs> Okay, so do you have any questions for us? So, oh, oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> so, do you have questions? Yeah. Um, oh. Just to, out of curiosity, um, so like now for the summertime, um, and with the current court uh, case regarding removing in counties, city of moving counties, we at Elder Homestead and around anticipate Wilson Park and Jack and Jill Park becoming what they have been. Overrun. Are, overrun. <laughs> um, would those, like those be specific addresses that you would be able to pull up? Yes. So I can pull by city facility name, so I can search Wilson Park or if I have it that, and, and I have to do that, right? Because when I think about it, I have to pull then Hmm, Wilson Park, what does that mean? That, that I search Wilson Park, yes. I search the address of Wilson Park, but then now I'm searching, what is it, Anderson and San Pedro? Because yeah. that could be there. I'm searching Cardenas and San... So I, I tr we try to get all of those different things that are related to that location. And then uh, whatever you don't want, we pull it up. Like if it's, oh, they really meant, you know, Giovanni's or something and not Wilson Park, and it's, but it's coming up because I used the data search. So... We try to do that for you. Okay. Yeah. And if you want to see it over time, yes, we can pull it over time. It's because I think there will be some pretty interesting statistics this summer again. Because um, I, I don't know that the city has many chance to clean up the park like they have put like that 1.7 million to get it all fancy and fancy and then over the past it was obvious it was just degraded and so I think those two parts, to me, would be um, something to bring up. Sure. I mean, I'm sure there's more parts throughout District 6, but those two seem to be the ones that are surrounding mm -hmm. that have that done this. So are there other parts that should be included as well? Or, I mean, just, you brought up those two, and I know you're saying they, they would probably be the most important, but I wanted to make sure. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. I mean, I, I can't. I don't remember it. 
for the parts. Does anybody okay, else have a question? Since data, data reflects only calls that came in to the 311 as opposed to, like, I, I think the 311 is being answered on the week and it didn't used to be. And yeah. so, well, one point I tried to call in about a medical distress issue. Um, I couldn't, I can't diagnose what, what was going on. I didn't know if something was right. Tried 311. Saturday was not open till eight o'clock Monday morning. Uh, and it was before. You may be open now, but if people call 242-6877 or 911, are those calls, is that data picked up here or only calls to 311? Is this only inputs it to 311? So it could be phone calls, it could be off of our app, it could be through web submissions. It's just 311 data. Laura would probably be able to get you the information. That comes from uh, 911 or 242. Can email to what? That information can be. Oh, yeah, yeah. Email us. Yeah, of course. Yes. But yeah, that is why we are sending the because they this they they can't combine those maybe one day they'll be able to combine those but right now they're separate systems so um that that's why they're both here okay. i have two questions is 311 24 hours no so our hours of operation are monday through saturday 6 a.m to 9 p.m and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. You can do 24-hour reporting by using our app. You can download it, ABQ311, or you can report some functionality on the city's website online. We don't have a preference to how it's reported. We don't have a we don't place a priority over a phone call over a web submission. It all comes in and we take it in the order that they're received and we process that we send them out to the departments nearly instantly. The minute that we complete the ticket and it goes to the department, the department supports it. But also just remember 311 is not for emergencies. Correct. Just want to make sure everybody's clear on that. Yeah. So then my other question, real quick, and I may have talked to you Laura about it, I don't remember, but I called 311 one time because I had a homeless person on my property that I wanted off and was told to call 242 cops, of which I actually wanted to talk to ACS. I didn't want to talk to the police department. And originally, I was under the impression that to get to uh, ACS, you did it through 311, not through 242 cops. So I just need to find out. Who really is, who do I actually call? And, and then what was interesting, I requested a ACS person and they, interesting again, they sent out an officer, which I was really surprised at. And then the officer really just took the person off the property and that was the end of that. But but I really didn't want to get a police officer involved because they've got they're busy doing other things. They don't need to be dealing with low level things. And so I was after uh, ACS, of which I never saw. So you do contact ACS 3311, but it is not an immediate response from them. We don't dispatch at 311. So I don't have a way to get something to them immediately. If it's an urgent response you're looking for, it's got to be 242. Okay, when when I talked to Mariella originally, when she when she came on board, when ACS was first being uh, put together, she said, "If you have a problem, police officers, police department, it may be an hour, maybe two, it may be a long time before we show up." She said, "Our department, ACS, will be there in ten to fifteen minutes." Okay, now if three one one doesn't send out a call. They're definitely not going to be there in 10 to 15 minutes. So how do I get to ACS direct? Right now, that would be through 242 Cops. Yeah. They are being dispatched by the police side of the house now. Okay. Um, they will not remove someone from property 
They will not call APD to have someone removed from property. If you want someone trespassed, that is a police call. All right. They're not law enforcement. Uh, their model is to connect people with resources. Right. Well, I'm assuming they're going to kind of help them off the property. No. I mean, they're going to try and talk them out. You know, they're They'll, safe. They offer them resources, but if the person refuses, then they, uh, you know. Yes. I think the whole thing's a little confusing and it'd be nice to see it connected somehow because I have more than once called 311 and told I have to call 911. Well, why can't you just connect me? Or, you know, it, it seems like everything's so separate that it's kind of hard to figure out who to go to when. And then if you're driving, you know, you have to call twice. I don't know. So there's a, it, there's a main reason for that. Okay. Uh, when you call into 311, you or when you call into 311 and you want to be transferred to 911, 911 shows our information, not your not your I number. Uh, they call it an automatic number identification and not your location. It's coming from us. So the only way that 911 is going to get your location information is to come directly from the person that you're calling about, right? They understand that. You know, my calls were, I'm seeing more and more people walking around without their pants on. Yeah. Indecent exposure. I don't know why I can't call 311, but I, I can't. I have to hang up and call 911 and spend that time with an officer. It's an indecent exposure. I don't, I don't get that. But that's what's happened to me, you know, through 311. I guess and, the, the easiest way to look at it is, what outcome do you want? Do you want this person to receive services? And do you want it, want it to be done quickly? Then that's going to have to go through 242 to get out. Well, 311 won't take it at all. If it's a, if it's a safety issue or if it's a, a criminal issue, we don't take them. That's what they call it. Yeah. Criminal issue. Yeah. So, okay. Anyway, just, you know, two cents worth. I wish you all could, you know, connect, connect it a little bit better. Um, I think it's going to be over here. These guys, yes, we do. Yes, we do. So it's not an immediate response. So I don't know what ACS's response time is at that point. For you call us, we take the request for ACS, it is sent instantly to ACS. What ACS does from there. It's about a 24 hour response time. I think it's what they have published. So I don't know those response times. Thank you. So who do we talk to about getting resolution or something like this? These are ridiculous. It's ridiculous that it takes 24 hours for ACS to respond. I don't know that it takes 24 hours. Do That's what they have published. Call or hmm? Do you need to 311 call? Yeah, the 311. Someone who said, he said, when Everything was set up that they would respond in 10 minutes. Now the response is going to ACS and have 24 hours. So That's I think really Chuck, the, I'm going to go back to what Carrie just said, and, and this is it. You have to think about what's the outcome you're looking for. Because if you're looking for a response to remove somebody who's here right now, then that's not a 311 call. 311 is basically an email forwarding service. That I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that that's that's what it is. They're going to generate a notice. It's going to go to a department person who's going to then send it to the next person who then is going to schedule to get it done or whatever it is. It's, it's part of a notification system for helping government try to address problems, right? It is not an emergency response system. So it has to be 242 COPS and 911. So. so if we have a homeless person that needs help, call 311, they send it to ACS to respond that they just need help. They need maybe transportation over here for to get out, uh, to have a place for 24 hours for it to be assessed as to what the next step is. And but they, it could take 24 hours. For ACS to respond. So how long does ACS usually take to respond? If if you need someone from ACS dispatched to check on that person, that's a two four two cops call. Three one one, and I can kind of speak on both sides of it because I'm the three one one clearinghouse for APD, with the exception of abandoned vehicles. 
So when I get a call or I get a email notification from 311, maybe I'm not at my desk. I'm in meetings all day, so I don't get that till the end of the day. So that's why it usually takes a day or two for us to review those and forward them on where they go. But if you need a dispatch from ACS personnel, that's going through 242 COPS or 911, depending on the situation. If it's an emergency, you have someone um, on the sidewalk. Um, if you have someone on the sidewalk um, who maybe is in crisis and going to step into traffic, that would be a 911 call. Um, if you have an individual who, as you said, maybe needs to be transported to services, that would be a 242 call. Or if a person is walking down the street without pants or underwear on showing their privates, that's a 911 call. Mm -hmm. Every single time. Thank you. Sorry. And it, or if you're laying in your alley or somebody's sleeping in your alley, somebody is just like, oh, there's a tent in my alley. It's kind of been there and I, they're probably going to be there tomorrow. 311. So, so that's like the urgency, the criminal nature, the danger is, is the defining factor. Go ahead. Is there any regular data analysis that 311 does or any metrics that you all track um, on your own just for interest? For interest, I am copied on every ticket that is created for ACS. Okay. So I see everyone that comes through my desk every day. Okay. Um, I also see all the needle pickup requests every day. I'm also on the mayor's reports every day. So I see what gets reported to mayor's office 331 of us every day. Uh, I can create nearly any type of reporting that you want. I do it at the direction of the department. So on any given day, a department will ask me, hey, I need to see all of the records for 1125 California from this time to this time, and I'll pull it and I'll look at it. But for me personally, those are the ones that I want. It's mayors, needles, ACS. Okay, got it. I'm just curious if, if there are seasonal trends to like homelessness related reports. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So 311 is very event driven. Any time that there's something going on within the city, our phones light up. And that means it's sunny out, it's windy, it's rainy, um, there was an accident, uh, there's debris on the freeway, you name it. They're opening the gateway, we get calls. So uh, any type of event will increase our volume. Our season, we're seasonal as well. So the more people are out and about in the summer when it's warm and they have a tendency to report more. And we've tried to make it very convenient for them to use an app or to um, contact us and report things And people do. Our slowest month typically is February. Um, our busiest month is, anybody guess? July. Oh gosh, you guys are so honest. <laughs> Yes, our busiest month is July because we take, I I could not <laughs> hire enough people <laughs> to yeah. handle the fireworks calls. Yeah. Uh, but we do extend our hours around the 4th of July to work until midnight to try to account for some of that. So what we try to do is, yeah. So yes, there are definitive trends that you can see. You just need to let me know what you're looking for. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for giving this presentation. And I don't have any specific requests for like ongoing reporting, but it's really, I think, helpful for folks to know like what's available and in terms of understanding maybe what the city has um, received in terms of calls on these different issues. This, I think, it may be important going forward to understand what the trends are and what folks needed to call the city about. So thank you so much for that's coming. exactly that's why thing. we're here. So yeah. I just uh, we're gonna run out of time yet again, guys. But my question that I really want to try to get done tonight with Carrie while she's here is the words we kind of came up with were the homeless needles alley weed and litter gateway. Are there keywords that you feel like we should think about that aren't here? That's what I need from you. So, Chuck, and then rental assistance. Rental assistance. 
Um, okay. Several women in the fifties, six years ago. We can call for little assistance. Huh? I can pull that. Yeah, we get them in our office. Okay, Mike. <clears throat> this might cross balance, but uh, when there's somebody who appears to be uh, emotionally, mentally disturbed, uh, maybe having a psychotic break, or maybe uh, just rushing out of the house because their partner sent them off on the way and they're running down, walking down the street screaming and yelling like this. It, 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 it can be um, because maybe, you know, somebody is displaying erratic behavior and they just want ACS to come out. And the, the, the public will specifically say, I just want ACS. It's not an emergency. Please go check on them. We'll, we'll facilitate that call. Um, so whenever I'm pulling a key, when I'm, we, yes, we can pull stuff like this, but you're not going to get any one word to you won't get it perfectly, right? So if I pull screaming and I'm looking for screaming, you'll get everything with scream in it or screaming in it, but you might miss waving a stick, you know? So all I understand that those behaviors you're trying to capture. And yes, we can pull things like that, but you're not going to get it. I'm just I, I, I'm aware saying that. Yeah, you won't. Be the the issue is something that I run across frequently. Mm -hmm. In engaging with homeless folks. Okay, we got um, does weed and litter uh, include like human uh, waste, human feces? Um, no, I could do a separate search for feces. Uh, that's a unique topic because that's actually going to change a little bit in our world. Um, we're currently building out the framework to send those directly to environmental health. Right now, there isn't any one department that does feces. Uh, feces and human waste does get reported to us, but it's usually in addition to other encampment activities. Um, so it'll it'll get that. Yes, I can pull. I know it's issues sometimes on the surrounding streets. It will get better. You'll get better reporting soon, but I can I can include that as we want. Okay, we're on the chicken right now, Tim Wally. It would be, you essentially have been telling us that we don't know who to call when, and, and that's true. So we need a, something to tell us who to call when, and we need training in that area. And we need somebody to be able to answer the phone. When I call two for three cops, if, if I get an answer within 10 minutes, I'm lucky. Absolutely lucky. Now, if that happens, do you have anyone that checks your own response time to yeah. you have somebody on staff that periodically calls two for two cops just to see how long it takes? They can actually pull calls that are coming in and track it very closely. If you have that instance where you call and it rings a few more times, please uh, call 311 and that gets sent up to our. Uh, manager of the Emergency Communication Center and our deputy chief. Now I will. How do I know that? So she's just telling no, me I'm just saying. Frantically calling 242 cops. Okay, well. If you're it, telling me if that doesn't work, call 311. Okay, what is No, no, no. I'm saying if you have a, a whole time. I will tell you our 911 operators and our three, or 311, our 242 and 911 operators are the same people. So typically what happens is when you call 242 and you're on hold a few minutes longer than you expect, it's because we have 911 calls coming in. There was an instance, um, there was a medical emergency at a soccer game. There were 12 operators on duty. They had 18 911 calls come in at the same time. I'm telling you that we are very concerned about wait times. We can track them very closely to the point where our deputy chief gets involved and wants to know that. But the place to report that is through 311 that will come to me and I will make sure it gets to the right person. But if you're on 242, just let it ring. If you do not hear a message saying, you have reached the Albuquerque Police Department, please stay on the line. That means the call has not connected with our center. So hang up and call back to the 242 cops. 
on any rooms before that message should be. It usually comes on within a few weeks. So I've never gotten that message. I have never. Yeah, watched. when I've called and I've had no answer, it just rings. Oh, yeah, because I called and I get that. Huh. Yeah. And so, sometimes it's a cell phone provider hmm. um, issue that they're that it's not going through correctly. So we I can. Call my mom and it comes yeah, and we can um, we can check that. And Interesting. See, you know, because it has to go through a bunch of relays um, to get to it, so it's routed properly uh, to hit the 911 and the 242 Cox lines. So um, if you let us know that, um, and also we always recommend you call your provider, let them know that you tried to call and it didn't work. All right, is the deputy chief position operational? We need some person there. There. Yeah, yeah. Deputy Chief Gray goes over support Grado. services. Yes, the commander said he's been acting deputy chief. Right. So when a deputy yeah. chief travels, um well, that's what it is. Yeah. Typically oh. when they're going to, to conferences or they're they're traveling or they take a couple of vacation days, right. they upgrade someone oh. in that position. Okay, guys. So it is 806, so we're late. Um, but um I hope that that it's still work. Are, do you guys feel like it's working for us to have community Very concern first and then, then the presentation afterwards like this, even though we're running out of time to do these other things? Are you still liking the agenda to stay the same way it is for the next meeting? Yes. Personally, I think the open-ended nature of the, the first step on the agenda ends up kind of eating up the whole meeting yeah. about every single time and we don't we don't get to the specific and then we you know the folks who have invited or you invited here too <laughs> get to spend the whole yeah, meeting. So I'm trying to just figure out how to meet your needs because you've expressed frustration that your needs were not being met. And so I'm trying to just figure out how do we want do we want the next meeting to have straight off going into the ops plan and the good neighbor agreement yeah and then if we get through that and have time at the end you can bring up community concerns and questions yes okay everybody agree to that right yeah that you know, would be mad at me next time. yeah okay <laughs> i just want to get this all clear okay so that will be the plan next meeting and laura has kindly agreed to come back um, and so I will let Lieutenant know that next meeting we're actually covering OS plan and good neighbor. And so it will be the meeting after that that we'll go through APD um, tracking Great. numbers and metrics. Okay. That a good plan for everybody? Yes. Yes. No? Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, oh. you. Thank yeah. you guys. Thanks everybody for all of the input and questions and really thoughtful way of looking at recording that we And recording, Mike Kachowski. Yeah. Here we go. I'm editing it. I'm really excited. I'm ready to be